Testosterone is a man's life force. You want to be successful, you want to build more muscle, you want to burn fat, you want to stay motivated. Testosterone gives you all of that. You should be protecting your T levels with your life. Most modern day men have very low testosterone levels. Explaining the lack of masculinity that there is nowadays. Have you just realized that men 50 years ago were way different to men today? And one of those reasons is because of testosterone levels. But in this video, I'm going to talk about how there is something more important than testosterone levels and that is androgen receptors. So, if you don't know what androgen receptors are, let me tell you this, right? Androgens are male sex hormones and testosterone is one of them. There's also more like DHEA, DHT, but I don't want to get into that in this video. And essentially, androgen receptors are what binds to the testosterone, the DHT or whatever it is for it to work, for it to activate. So testosterone on its own is actually useless without the receptor. And some people have more sensitive androgens, so testosterone gets used up more. That's why I don't like it when people say, oh, I have the symptoms of low testosterone, but I have 700 nanograms. Why is that? Your androgens might not be sensitive. It might not be binding to the testosterone. So T levels on its own is useless. But you might think, oh man, I just have to rely on my genetics if it's good enough. But this is where I come into play. What if I told you that you can make your androgen receptors more sensitive, so your testosterone is more useful pretty much, it's more efficient. Your hard-earned testosterone actually gets used instead of being around the blood and doing fuck all. You want your testosterone to bind to the receptor to build more muscle, to burn more fat, to be more confident, be more motivated. I've got you, and I promise you this. The more you go into the video, the more valuable the information gets. So, I know in the 2024 attention span isn't great, but suck it up for now because you're about to get some amazing knowledge on how to increase your androgen receptor sensitivity. Before we start the video, I just want to tell you that I have a free Discord server for young men who are on self-improvement, who like to go to the gym, who like to discuss about the gym, who want to know more about testosterone. So, discuss fitness in general. And if you do want one-on-one -on -one coaching there with just me and you, then go join the Discord server, we'll figure out the details there. But the Discord server itself is completely for free, so go join that right now, there's literally zero risk there. Alright, I'm not gonna waste any time with this video and chat bullshit for fucking 10 minutes straight and at the end give you one point, which is not even valid, right? I'm gonna go straight into it. The first food that you need to increase your androgen receptor sensitivity is actually onions. Onions are one of my favorite foods to eat that is not pretty much meat, right? One bad part about onions makes your breath stink, but it comes with a good trade-off. It tastes amazing with a salad, but also it increases the production of LH, luthanizing hormone. And luthanizing hormone is what pretty much, let's say, kickstarts the testosterone making process. And in case you don't know, starts from your hypothalamus, goes to the pituitary gland, which releases FSH and LH, luthanizing hormone, which goes all the way to your testes, and then the magic comes out. So women and men have LH, but the more LH you have, right, most of the time, the more testosterone you have, because that's how it's produced. That's why people who inject steroids will have a crap ton of testosterone, but they will have very low LH levels. Why is that? It's because since they're injecting testosterone, their body doesn't find a reason to actually make testosterone. So LH goes down. So testosterone isn't being made naturally, right? Now it's just steroids. But obviously we want to increase our T levels as much as we can naturally, not fucking, not this steroid bullshit. Cause you know the consequences of steroids. So I just want to put this in your head. More LH equals to more testosterone. And not only gives you that, but has a lot of antioxidant properties and it's just goaded for testosterone. I can't remember who said this, but I think it was that it was in a war and there was somewhere in Asia, they would just feed them onion soup to feel better. Onion is an amazing food for not only testosterone, but for the immune system. So onion is just a goaded food to eat overall. Number two is anything that has pretty much protein in it. That is a natural food source, nuts, chicken, eggs, and the reason why I pick protein source is not only because it's good for muscle growth. We all know protein is good for muscle growth. But eating more protein, going more on the higher side of protein, actually decreases something called SHBG, sex hormone binding goblin. And what this does is it pretty much binds to the testosterone, pretty much what imagine what the receptor will do. 
but instead when it binds to it it actually prevents it from activating so to put this in the most simple bro science terms imagine it's ch chasing after the testosterone mo molecules and then 99 or 98 percent of the time i can't remember catches it testosterone can't come into play and obviously this is not true shbg is important right or wouldn't be a thing but what i'm trying to say is for having more androgenic activity having more testosterone we don't want more shbg and if you increase protein intake less shbg binds to the testosterone or dht and more binds to the receptor and this is why i hate these youtubers who say how boosting testosterone is super super complicated and they give out some random methods ice your balls do this kind of run because this power sprint will boost this this it's so fucking simple and i'm not saying sprinting doesn't boost t's it does but the point is these youtubers make it so complicated for some reason and then the audience just gets so confused and think oh testosterone is genetic because they're not exactly sure what to do but every single man can get to minimum 800 nanograms all the way up to 1200 naturally they try to complicate things for you guys when the main thing is just micronutrients sleep exercise the main things but they don't go into enough detail with that they say eat healthy but you don't know what it means to eat healthy what do they mean by eating healthy right you could eat a vegan diet you could eat a carnivore diet okay this last one not a lot of people talk about it right the food everyone knows everyone loves people eat them but first of all they're not eating them enough and second this food contains this i think it's amino acid correct me if i'm wrong that increases the shit out of your androgen receptor sensitivity and if you guessed red meat you are correct red meat is the most goaded food for testosterone i think it's actually the best it contains so much zinc which is so important it contains protein fats but most importantly the thing i was talking about l-carnitine you probably heard of l-carnitine before there's actually supplements for l-carnitine but that is completely pointless when you could just eat 150 grams of red meat per day and your androgen receptors will be more sensitive. So if you eat red meat, not only would you get your fat, your protein, your zinc, your other micronutrients, but you also get L-carnitine, which makes your androgen receptors more sensitive. And L-carnitine is super rare in foods. The only foods where you can actually get it in abundance is red meat or you could supplement with it, which is fucking pointless. The reason why I don't like supplements you take L-carnitine supplement, you are only getting L-carnitine. You eat red meat, 150 grams of red meat every single day. You not only get your L-carnitine, you get your zinc, you get vitamin A, you get selenium, you get you get all of your micronutrients. I'm not saying red meat has all of your micronutrients, but it has a lot. And it gets protein, fats. The risk to reward ratio on red meat is so high. When supplements, you just get that one thing. Sure. It would be nice to have some extra sometimes miss a day right and then you take a pop a little pill and you're done that's fine but i don't want supplements to be crutches and you can click off this video right now since i told all three of the foods i'm going to talk about how, how much testosterone can actually change you right i don't know why it's deep in my voice i sound so cringe right <laughs> all right this is a photo of me about two years ago puberty hit like a motherfucker right i was fat anxious as fuck you can ask my family members oh you can't but if you ask any of my family members my close friends they will all know i was an anxious guy i would panic over the most little stuff and i'll just i'm just so anxious i'll play games watch anime all day i had no ambition no motivation obviously i was fat as fuck right but as soon as i discovered what this testosterone thing is i immediately caught interest and i started studying it i started watching videos on it i started implementing some stuff and then my t-level went higher and then it got stuck around 650 where a lot of you guys are at 500 600 700 right even 700 it's not bad at all but it can definitely be better right but then you've got to take it to the next level compete talk to attractive women get all of your micronutrients get the perfect amount of sleep and then it goes up to 900 a thousand so if you're asking me oh though no, what's your t-levels right and i actually don't like that question because it fluctuates so much one day i could have 900 one day i have around 600 it changes but on average i have 800 to 900 if nothing fucks up obviously sometimes you don't get your sleep you have school you're a bit stressed 
it could go down fast. And since you stay till the end of this video, I'm going to tell you a hack to actually measure your testosterone levels every single day. And that is the dynamometer, right? You squeeze that shit, it will pretty much tell you your androgen status. It's not one-to-one -one correlation, it's not 100%, but it's the closest thing we've got to check your testosterone levels. So yeah, we also talk about that in my Discord server. As I'm recording this, I actually just made a new chat in my Discord server where everyone just squeezes the dynamometer and just shares their results. So yeah, go join the Discord server. I'll see you in the next video.